never really sure what the knobs are going to be until I've tried a few things. I consulted Sarah, but these ones are a pretty safe bet. I like these ones because you can get them new, but they it's a kind of knob that this company's been making forever. I think since they were you know, probably Bakelite originally. I, I actually have some old Bakelite ones. And these are just a plastic version, but they're they kind of could be from the 40s or they could be from last week. And they're not too big. Some of these ones that don't have a pick guard, a lot of the old, I, I tend to buy old radio knobs and stuff, like eBay or yard sales or whatever, and um, sometimes they, they can look a little big, but these ones seem to be small enough to work in a lot of different situations. The margins of my high school algebra notebook were filled with pictures of um, drawings of guitars. Sometimes aping, you know, things I'd seen and other times kind of making up my own stuff. I'd go see bands and I was always very aware of what kind of guitars they were playing. Sort of like the, the guitar nerd part came before the guitar player part. <laughs> I think outwardly my guitars are a little familiar and, and a little leaning towards a lot unique, um, but there's some pretty subtle things that I think make them different than other guitars. Each one is like a work of art and his website is like an art gallery. And you know, whenever you play one of his guitars, people are just kind of knocked out with how stunning they look. And then the player is like, oh, well they actually sound good and feel good to play too. Nothing I had seen was aesthetically as impressive, as beautiful, as graceful as the Creston guitars. A lot of the rest ones just look like knockoffs of Fenders. Whereas I feel like with his guitars, they never feel like knockoffs. They feel like something that he's created. If I were forced to define it, I guess I, I would say that I want them to look timeless. You know, I, I'm, I'm not interested in replicating guitars from the 50s and 60s, but I would like to think my guitars would have looked at home in the 50s or 60s. The wood in it is from the 1800s from Anders Parker's mother's barn. The wood, besides being really old and creating deep resonance, is really what drew me to it because it's so powerful. I really wanted something old and from a barn, and I grew up on a farm. So that meant a lot to me. Creston is a real uh, advocate of the top loader bridge, you know, where the strings don't go through the back of the body which some people insist on, you know, for tone reasons and sound reasons, but I, I along with many people, have come to the conclusion, conclusion that you get just as great a tone, if not maybe one that uh, you like a little better with a top loader style bridge. It's a tank. I beat the hell out of it and it stays in tune and it sounds just like a telly should sound, I think. He doesn't sell them to, to stores, so you don't see them anywhere. They get bought up and they're, they're gone, so I've, I've never even got to hold one or, or check it out. Um, I, I just know that uh, uh, people really like that aesthetic that he has. I just put three little dabs in there. Something that took me a while, a while to learn. I talked to an acoustic repair guy who said, three small dabs. 
is all you need. But then you can you can get it out if you need to get it out. I mean, it smears obviously when you put the nut in there, but um, it's nice when you have to replace a nut. They break or wear out to uh, just be able to tap it, have it come out. I claim to have uh, started Creston on his journey as a luthier and guitar maker. He uh, had um, a guitar body that he'd refinished and worked on in various ways that had had different lives as different guitars and he wanted to change the electronics and it, he needed some routing done. He played that for a while. I think he painted it like uh, Sonic Blue or Daphne Blue or one of the classic blue colors. And then he just forgot the thing at my house when he left. Um, but I had this guitar body kicking around which is sort of like a you know, exciting, shiny object in the house. And he told me I could, um, you know, just do whatever I wanted with it. So I refinished it and um, cobbled together a bunch of parts I found on online classifieds and that kind of thing. Eventually I just made myself a guitar, more or less from scratch. And um, I, I, by luck or uh, by chance or something, it came out really nicely and I still play it all the time. It's actually a really, truly great guitar. I think. I had talked about wanting a really thick, fat neck Telecaster, and then I'd played a couple of them and decided they were actually more comfortable than thin necks. And he made me a guitar that's painted John Deere green and, and yellow, the classic colors with a maple neck. He just told all of his professional guitar player friends, and then next thing I knew, all these guys who were sort of heroes of mine were ordering guitars. But I played that a lot, and played it with uh, a lot of Jay Farrar solo stuff that I did, and still used it. You know. And suddenly I went from this kind of three guitar a year hobby to um, not quite a full time job, but pretty close. things that really drew me to uh, to Creston's work also was was partnering with Sarah Ryan. I, I think she's brilliant and I love what she does. I was um, just in a store one day, like Christmas shopping or something, and I, I saw a, a mug that had a, a green and black um, color pattern that I just really liked. And this is when I was just thinking, like everything I saw, I was sort of evaluating aesthetically for guitar finish. and I. It just sort of struck me like that would be great, that those two colors would be great together on a guitar. And I mean, I, I, I guess I sent her an email just saying, this is something to think about, would you be interested? And she, kind of to my surprise, was really enthusiastic. She said, a dream come true, I think was the phrase she used. So I made myself a guitar and she painted it and it was, uh, I mean, I was totally knocked out. The front had a um, sort of a looping flower and the back had this very symmetrical design with two birds and um, some uh, vines and flowers. And looking back on it, it's, it seems so kind of primitive compared to where she's gone with it. Yeah, she does all of our album artwork and yeah. all of the band's artwork yeah. is All Sarah the album Ryan, covers. So. The next guitar I get is going to be over the top Sarah Ryan. <laughs> yeah, we have like a lot of friends and fans or like we see they have like Sarah Ryan like Whalen Speed artwork tattoos. Yeah. You know, so it's kind of, it's, it's neat to Her see artwork's that. artwork's on skin. Yeah, <laughs> spreading around. And on the back, she also did, you know, just as much work on the back. This was a nice touch. Chris didn't even tell me about this. He carved a piece of ebony for the plate here and put it on. Yeah, and then there's Sarah's little Vermont heart that she threw on there. I knew I wanted a deep sea creature, and I looked at all the other things that, she, that Sarah had painted on other instruments, and she had a lot of, floral and, um, uh, you know, a lot of vines and stuff like that. And I thought, oh, well, a squid, you know, might be kind of a fun thing for her to, to draw, hopefully. So that's sort of how I picked that. She really brings something that no other artist, I think, has brought to electric guitar bodies like that before. She has a very, very distinct style. And I think that's why, for example, uh, Brett Hughes, his Creston is featured in the Fretboard Journal article because that paint job is just really distinct, really unique, and it makes for a beautiful guitar. Her work is perfect as far as I'm concerned and there's not too many things that are perfect in life. So they look good on stage from, you know, 100 feet away, but if you see them up close, they're incredible. At this point, I'm so dependent on her because not only do I love the guitars that she's made, but 
I sort of feel like I have to run every aesthetic decision by her and she, you know, designs the my guitar picks and my t-shirts and painted the sign at the driveway of my new shop and, you know, anything, anything that requires any sort of um, ornamentation or decoration. I mean, there's nobody else I would turn to. I feel like it's, it's such a part of the identity of my guitar company, but also sort of as who I am as the, you know, as the face of that mm. whole endeavor. So if, if I hadn't found her, I don't know what I'd be doing now. You know, it really seems essential to the development of my guitars. Everybody is friends with Creston. It's almost impossible uh, to avoid. I call Creston the nexus because um, I've never heard of anybody that was not friends with him. And like, not just even local people, but like say some, you're just casually talking about some famous band and Creston will say, you know, I know them. <laughs> but, but he doesn't, not like, uh, not like, he's not like a name dropper. Um, he just knows a lot of people. Hi. I mean, it's not just like bands. Like, he knows like every cool um, painter in town. Oh, that's, is that you? Is that the one you just recorded like a couple weeks ago? That was months ago. Oh. He knows everybody in all the bands. He knows like everybody in all the bands in every town. I've done a lot of guitars with a lot of wire in them. And it hasn't really been a problem, but the, the way that this one is arranged, there's just like a lot of wire travel back and forth and back and forth up, up to this, uh, this kind of unconventional spot for the pickup selector through the back. So um, using the shielding paint um, to make, you know, so it's like, like a Faraday box. And this has been sanded to, I think it's 400 grit. So I'll bring it up from 400 all the way to 1500 and then polish it. Preston's sort of notorious for being particular about certain things he will or won't do um, with his instruments, which is kind of funny because he's such a good-natured guy. But you know, when you read, if you ever read like the, uh, he has like a frequently asked questions page. You know, all the things he just won't do. People will ask for gu certain guitars, and he'll be like, "I don't want to make a guitar like that," and he won't do it. You can do anything you want, right up to the point where you eventually get Preston a little pissed off, and he's like, "I'm not going to do that." <laughs> <laughs> I brought up. The, uh, the idea of having three pickups, kind of like a Strat would have on it, and he kind of didn't want to do that, and I'm glad I didn't do that, because it's too much, it's not necessary. Asked him about a baritone, he had already been building some baritones. And so we talked about it, and he actually convinced me, once again, he knew better, um, that maybe instead of going from a low E to, a, you know, this middle E, to start at a low A, which kind of brought it up a little further. The first time he told me no to something I wanted, I was like, well, what do you mean no? I was like, this is what I want. And he basically took a concerted effort to try to talk me out of why it was not a good idea. Turns out he was right. For a lot of people, they've never ordered a custom guitar before, and they start thinking about what makes it more custom. And often that means, you know, an extra pickup or, um, you know, more and more controls to, so they can sort of tailor things a million different ways. My own experience as a ham-fisted player, the fewer options there are, the better, you know. I, I, I'm not thinking about my options, I'm thinking about playing the guitar. So I always do best on a guitar that's very, very simple. He's like, you know, the pick guard, do you want a triple ply or a single ply pick guard? And I was like, what's the difference? You know, he's like, you know, a humble person, like he was like, <laughs> a humble musician is the difference. Right. And I was like, all right, single ply, it's fine. Yep. <laughs> Oh. oh man, I got double. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Gold hardware is a really hard sell for me. Black hardware, even worse. Five string bass, six string bass. Basses shall have four strings. And so I said, yeah, what I really want is a five string bass, but I know you don't do them, you know? He's like, well, what about if you just strung, had four strings and strung it, you know, just strung it all one string lower? I'm like, all right, let's do that. Let's give that a try and see what that's like. 
he tries to create the simplest guitar possible unless a client of course wants to make it more complicated but i remember him telling me he would never do things like you know funky weird colors of lacquer or you know uh what do they call it uh figured woods that kind of thing and and i think that it's impressive to have someone who's willing to tell people no because he really wants to create something that's great. My suspicion is he just doesn't like a lot of extra stuff, you know, on the on the instruments. And to be honest, like, like my um, my bass has four knobs on it, and we kind of went back and forth on that and kind of how we might want to lay out the different knobs on the bass. They all control sort of different functions of the sound, and. Um, you know, if I had to go back and do it over, I'd probably go with his suggestion and be like, yeah, you only really need one or two knobs. That's, that's kind of like a line in the sand, you know, like all those other guitar builders do that and I just, I don't want to do that. I think when I first discovered him, finding all these artists that he makes guitars for, it was like, whoa, you know, uh, Ian McKay from Fugazi has one of his baritones. Jay Farrar. Jay Farrar, and then Someone. Tim Bloom from the Mother Hips. Um, Mark Spencer. Adam Ant. <laughs> <laughs> it seems to be these days that people really like the whole notion of handmade. Uh, I mean, those big companies are still make, selling millions of guitars a year, so I don't think it's hurting their business, but um, I think there's a lot of players enough players to sustain a lot of people like me who are interested in handmade, uh, made to order stuff. So um, between that kind of, that being in the air and the internet, it's a good time I think for people like me. for a guy who's never owned an electric guitar. <laughs> <laughs>